What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, another electronics video for you. Today we're on the water and I'm gonna show you my process and how I find offshore summer bass. All right, so I said offshore only because if you're a shore fisherman or you're a shallow water fisherman, you don't necessarily need electronics or have the ability to have electronics. Uh, my tip for that, let me go ahead and get this camera set up here. My tip if you are a shore fisherman, obviously you're limited to accessibility. You're limited to uh, where you can access the shore of a lake or a river or a pond or whatever. Um, but there are some things you can look for. Things I like to look for on my map. Again, you can get these maps on your phone. This is Lake Master. You can download the app. You can download your, your home body of water, Navionics. Uh, you can get on Google Earth. You can pull back overlays, all that sort of stuff. We've done videos on all that. But my point is do some research at home or on your phone and even if you are a shore fisherman, you can figure out the closest uh, access points to shallow pockets or main lake points, somewhere where you can walk out and fish like a jig or a, a swim bait, a burrito, a, a kitex, something like that. Um, but it's also visual. So you shallow water fishermen, a lot of times in the summer, when I go into the very back of a pocket, you know, I come all the way back and I come in here, I'm actually shutting off all my electronics. I wanna be quiet and I don't need them. You know, I'm in less than five feet of water. I don't need that sonar ping. I don't need that, that extra ticking or the non-natural sounds going on. But again, it's also visual. So you shore fishermen and you shallow water fishermen, um, Number one tip, use your eyes, look for birds. It's all about bait fish. So if you look into a cove, um, shallow water fishermen, you're running around on the boat, you go into a cove, you see birds diving, that's a win right there. You can go back there and, and blast them on top water on reaction baits. Those fish are typically on those bait balls. You know, this time of the year, summertime, I'm kind of talking about deep fish because we're talking about those offshore fish that school up and eat, uh, feed on big balls of bait. So we're gonna go do that here in a bit. Gonna plug you in uh, to my recorder so you can see what I'm seeing on the electronics and hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, we got the weather that holds out and we can come across a, a school or two of fish. I like to film these electronics videos on either darker days or cloudier days so you guys don't get a bunch of reflection on the hummingbird units, uh, but that's kind of a double-edged sword, right? You know, you're always wondering if you're gonna get hit with lightning or, or get poured on. So back to the shallow guy. If you're a shore guy, do some research, download these, download these apps and find those key areas where you can access the shoreline, backs of pockets, hopefully there's birds diving, um, and then look for those access points where you can find those main lake points, those breaks, those ledges to deeper water. Those fish are gonna hang right on that ledge when they're feeding. And then you shallow water fishermen, if you're in a bass boat, cut off all your electronics, uh, be real quiet on your, your trolling motor, your trim, your raptors, your talons, power poles, whatever your shallow water anchors are. Um, it's really nice with these raptors I actually have a speed dial where I can adjust from slow to medium uh, fast. So I can actually creep in, say I'm throwing a frog or a top water and I get to an area where I just, the, I can just barely reach the area that I wanna get to. I can drop those raptors down super slow, super quiet. Don't make a big splash and don't spook those shallow water fish. So I'm gonna put the camera uh, on a, on a, a mount up here. I'm gonna plug in the recorder. We're gonna go offshore and I'm gonna kind of show you the process from looking at the map, finding where I want a side image and down image, finding the schools of fish, and then we'll jump up front and we'll plug you in there and show you kind of how I use my 360 and uh, my Mega Live to really die. Three, two, one, and record. Okay, so real quickly, 
I talked about my phone or your phone. Uh, this is the Fish Smart app. You go in, you can down your download your favorite local lakes, favorite lakes, whatever it may be. But as you can see, you have a true satellite image of your lake. You can zoom in, you have all of your charts, okay? And you can even save waypoints. So that is super helpful. Uh, it's stormy, It's you're not out on the water, you're whatever, you can be on their phone finding new spots. You can do all your depth highlights. You know, I have my shallow water highlight set to uh, five foot, you see that red in there. I have my depth highlight 12 to 25. That's all the green on there and that's exactly like you're going to see right here on the on the unit so same so you, you don't even have to be in the boat to be finding saving waypoints cool cool areas that you want to look at now we've covered we've covered in the past you know how to read these read these charts right looking at it you got your deeper water over here you got your your high spot right here see this see these right here real close together contour lines that's a real abrupt ledge now these summer fish especially on a river system like the tva which is what you, what we're on uh these fish are current driven you know they're going to be in the same areas they're going to come out to these high spots they're going to be on these ledges um they might be down off of the ledge on bottom in say 30 foot or so but when that current starts going or they come up to feed, they're gonna pop up and they're going to, um, they're gonna, that's where they're gonna feed. They're gonna be up on that little lip. You can see over here, I got some waypoints. Uh, it's like a road bed that wasn't marked, but um, we're gonna go idle this on top, but you can see over here in the front, you can see how it kind of breaks off. And then you can see the high spot in the middle. You can see these this break over here and then you can see the same exact thing on the uh, down river side of this. So let's go idle over there and let's see if we can find some fish. So a lot of the times I'm gonna idle the edges first, basically the top and the bottom of the high spot or the ledge uh, and then I will kind of fish my way around if I see fish, idle my, around, idle my way around, do some side imaging. Let's jump on top and see if we see anything. We'll go downstream and see if there's fish there. Uh, and then when you find them, I like to waypoint them and then jump up front and then really dial in my casts with, uh, with 360 and live. If you don't have, we got some fish right here hanging off the little ledge. There. What, what I'm looking for this time of the year, I'm looking for big schools. I'm talking like 15 to 50 fish. Um, you know, those bass, when they get schooled up on these ledges out here, it can be so much fun. You know, when you get that school fired up, you can catch them every cast on a, on a flutter spoon you know, a big Nichols flutter spoon or a hair jig or some fish down here on, uh, on um, down imaging. Let me switch screens for you guys. You'll see them kind of on the 2D as well. 2D is a little bit better at seeing the arches. Um, down imaging is a lot better at uh, seeing the air bladders. You'll see those white air bladders. Uh, and But it's also better for um, I like to run 2D and down imaging side by side for grass and, and trees, brush piles. A lot of times a brush pile on 2D is gonna look just like a grass clump. You can see we got like a rock out here. You know, that's something you could waypoint and uh, later on those fish will sit on it. But you can see down here, got a couple, couple fish down here on bottom. You see the air bladders and stuff suspended. You come over here to 2D see these arches right there those are fish right that's that's the sonar ping going over and coming off of their back let's jump back over here to the map so 
So now that you kind of kind of know what to look for, you can see how it's just a lot of time behind uh, your electronics. You know, you'll hear guys talking about a ledge fishing tournament or fishing ledges, and they'll idle for hours looking for those schools of fish. We're not going to do that today, so um, hopefully we'll find some fish. But you'll see at least see the process and how this all works. Normally, I have this screen set up. I have. Uh, this screen set up on this, this is a Apex 13 right here, and right here I have an Apex 13, and this is my map. But because I have one recorder with HDMI going out recording off of this one, I made this screen for you so you can see the map as well. But normally, know that I have this screen down here where the map normally is, it looks just like this. Side imaging, 2D down imaging, so I can get a, a real good picture of what's going on. but I wanted you guys to see the map too so you could really see the stuff I'm looking for. So now we're up on top. We're coming up on top of this high spot. You can see guys, we're in the middle of the Tennessee River. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're just looking for high spots, looking for those ledges, those breaks. Those fish are gonna come out of the backwaters, some of them. A lot of them are gonna stay. Well, some are gonna stay, a lot of them are gonna come out, get in that current, and they're gonna come out to these high spots these ledges if you can find a rock pile or a big tree or something like that that's cover or structure on these key spots that's money as well so we're here we go we're idling over so far it's a dead zone we're in just about 10 feet 9.7 uh, you can see the water temp right here is 83.9 degrees it is warm 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 water Got a little bit of grass down here. Make sure we're recording. We are recording. It's always fun when you get home to edit these videos and something happened, technical difficulties, something didn't record, something, anyways. So I'm, sc I'm scanning 120 feet. You can see right here on the unit, 120, 120 feet out, the port and starboard side. Ooh, look at these guys. Look at that. See those fish schooled up? So, school of fish right there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over here. What is there, 30 or so there? I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. Waypoint. Let's, let's, do, uh, let's do a fish, we'll do red, okay? Boom, I got that school waypointed. Now that school's not gonna move too much, hopefully by the time I get down off of uh, the back of this point. Now, it's really hard, it's gonna take some time behind your electronics, fishing for the fish you see as we ease our way out off of this, off of this high spot, we're coming down into, back into the main river depths. But it's really hard, especially like the Tennessee River, I can't tell you how many species of fish are in this lake, right? You got white bass, yellow bass, uh, hybrid, striper, largemouth, bluegill, crappie, uh, drum, catfish, all sorts of different types of catfish. So, and these fish all school up, right? That, that school could be a school of striper, it could be a school of catfish, it could be a school of white bass, it could be largemouth bass. So learning your electronics, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around. Uh, learning your electronics Fishing for these fish and learning what they look like on the electronics will help you a ton. Uh, it's been a huge uh, learning uh, curve for me, learning all the different species. You know, out west, we didn't have so many fish species in a body of water. If you saw a school like that on, uh, on Clear Lake, it was either bass or catfish, right? That's all it was. If they were smaller, then we knew that they were blackfish or hitch or, or whatever, tule perch. Here, it could be one of 50 different things. So, so you guys see right here on the map, I got that waypoint of those fish. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the camera, I'm gonna unhook this cable, take the recorder up there, get set up and kind of show you how I would dial in these fish. But again, you guys kind of see what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these, these humps out here in the main river 
okay? I, I would side image the top and the bottom of them, and I would also fish these, side image these breaks right over here. This is the, the main river break coming off of the flat. So you guys can kind of see what I'm looking at, and there is miles and miles and miles of this stuff as you zoom out and you look down river you know there is so much shoreline so much uh, uh, sh not shoreline so much river break and ledges to side image um, it just takes a long time but we're gonna do this quickly we already found a school of fish I didn't even bring a rod I didn't even put a rod in the boat I didn't want to tempt myself uh, to fish and not shoot this so we're gonna get set up lined up and you can kind of, can kind of see how this whole uh, one boat network, my unit back here, talks to my unit up there, my waypoints, my uh, Mega Live, my 360, all have those waypoints so I can really dial that in and make sure I'm making the most accurate cast, I'm being the most efficient with my cast as possible. Okay, that took me a little bit longer than I wanted. It's probably been, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes to get the camera set up, get the cable, the HDMI cable unhooked, plugged in over here. Uh, what I noticed when I spot locked, uh, the boat didn't really move much. So that means that tells me there's not a lot of current. So, but uh, let me show you guys what I got up here. Again, I got my recorder over here, plugged in. I have a Humminbird Solix 15 up here. The reason I run the 15 lets me do good map, I have a 30% map, 70%, so a 30-70 split, uh, 360. 360 is amazing. Live did not, in my opinion, live did not eliminate the necessity for me, especially an offshore fisherman, for having 360. Yes, with the target lock, I could put this thing in scan mode, where this live is basically shooting that transducer 160 degrees out here just searching, right? But what, what I love about the 360, it's always looking. It's showing me where schools of fish are, where bait balls are. More importantly to me, where the brush pile is, where the uh, lay down or the grass patch is, right? If I'm fishing a big flat, there's a grass patch over here. I'm never gonna see that with live, but I'm gonna see it with 360. I can come right over here. I can waypoint it. It's gonna put the waypoint on my live, and now I can, I can see which area I need to pan my live to and then make that exact cast. Again, it's all about efficiency on, uh, on the water. You know, I'm not gonna get into the, the whatever about the forward-facing sonar, it's not as easy as people make it seem. Um, does it allow you to make more accurate casts? Absolutely. Does it allow you to catch fish that you never were there before, prior to it? Absolutely. But you still have to catch the fish. Just like 2D sonar, side imaging, even though you just school, we just waypointed a school of fish out 100 feet off the side of the boat, I still have to make that cast. I still have to present the right bait to them. So it's not as easy as, you know, you see all the different comments on, on social media and the internet. It's not as easy as people uh, that don't have it think that it is because you still have to catch the fish. I love it. But again, 360 mapping, and then I have my live, okay? So right here, you can see we've already We're sitting upstream of our waypoint. That tells me no current, right? I was spot locked, now we're just kind of drifting back upstream. If there was river or current right now, obviously we'd be floating downstream. But let's go ahead and flip around. Got the, the recorder going, and I'll show you kind of how I look at my waypoints. I look at my 360, and then I look at the live, and you guys can see the picture that I'm looking at. All right, so I run the, the Solix up front for the 360 and the mapping. I have the Apex down below for my live. It is a true high definition screen. The clarity on it is amazing. Uh, but more importantly, it's got the HDMI ins and outs so I can record 
for these types of tutorials for you and I can drop down a camera or um, whatever I would want to plug in or plug out for the HDMI but I don't have the map. Right, let me show let me see if I can do a, a split screen for you so let's go over maybe we'll have to create a view yeah let's see so we'll go home gonna angle this down for you guys so you guys can see basically go over to views we're gonna have to create a new one for you so let's do let's do chart and live okay go ahead and zoom in on this chart just so you guys can see what i'm looking at without seeing the two different screens overlaid it is going to kind of squash my live picture for you but uh, you guys will get the get the gist of it okay so there we go we're coming up we're going downstream to that school of fish you can see well you can't see it on a 360 but on my 360 i have a waypoint also what that's going to allow me to do say that was a waypoint for a brush pile now i could take my live and say okay start looking over this direction maybe one o'clock i'm sorry 11 o'clock 10 o'clock something like that and find find that piece of, of structure again it's been like now that i'm talking probably 20 minutes since we waypointed that school but let's see if we can find them Go ahead and adjust my depth now that we're up on top of this thing i'm going to adjust my depth on the uh on the live let's go so i have this set to 100 feet i'm actually looking out 100 feet now with the target lock i can i can steer it with this foot pedal right here a couple fish on bottom right there you'll see them moving around Right there, one right there. See that? A couple right there. But what this allows me to do, I can spot lock with my trolling motor and then I can um, adjust my live transducer separately. Or I can come over here, I can hit the Minkota button and then I can control the live where it looks with the actual trolling motor but that's kind of the process guys that is um that's how i use my ele electronics especially this time of the year like i said if you're a shallow water fisherman i will still use my live in 360 as i'm going in i'm looking for those uh grass patches those isolated grass patches and i'll use that live to really i'm not even looking for fish what i'm looking for i'm looking for that edge of that grass line so i can throw a square bill right off the edge of it a chatter bait you know maybe even top water right uh i'm not necessarily using it to find fish but you can see right there how the whole system works again it was a small sample size we could spend hours upon hours today doing this but I just wanted you to show, I wanted you to see kind of uh, my system, the one boat network, how it all works. You know, right here on live, you'll see it right down here on the recorder, but you got fish coming towards the boat. Just dip down on the bottom. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can find some more. Again, we didn't really find that big school of like the 20 or 30 fish that we waypointed. They're gonna be on this flat somewhere. Again, that's my fault with having to, to adjust everything and spend that extra 15 minutes. Normally, I'd waypoint, whip around, slowly drop trolling motor, get my graphs dialed in, and then start casting. Stay on those fish as they move up and down or off the sides of this, this high spot. I'm sitting here talking to the camera. I'm not looking at the screen. Um, 
makes it hard sometimes to see what's going on. And that is a factor too. Offshore fishermen, and this has completely changed the game. You'll see a lot of us are staring down. Uh, don't do it too much. Still pay attention. If I'm out here, I'm chasing this school of fish, but there's a bay right there or backwater over here, and I start seeing those fish diving, I'm pulling trolling motor and I'm going shallow. I'm not, I don't have to be anchored up out here and set out here. Uh, this is the style of fishing I like to do in the summertime because you get those mega schools, you know, those stories where you hear you catch 10, 12, 15 fish on a row. Every, every cast, your buddy's hooked up, you're hooked up, you're catching doubles on a crankbait. That is this style of fishing, the offshore ledge, uh, rock pile, high spot hump style of fishing. But there you guys can see the process uh, of using your electronics, your boat, idling. I don't care if it's a, a kayak or a little aluminum boat or a big bass boat like this guy. Uh, use your electronics. Prior to getting to the lake, do some waypoints on your phone so you know the areas that you want to side image. You know, you want to side image the break that leads into a creek and a backwater. Go side image that stuff, drop your waypoints, jump up front drop your troll motor in the water, you have your waypoints, you can see where that, that school of fish just was, and within seconds, you can be throwing a bait directly on top of those fish. Guys, technology has changed the game for years. You know, it's more advanced than it ever has, and I just wanted to show you guys how I've been learning, how I've been playing with all of it to uh, catch more fish down below in the video description i will link all the different products but uh, again just a small sample size i'm sure there was quite a bit of rambling in there so hopefully you can uh pick out the little nuggets or decipher what i was talking about but i wanted to show you guys kind of how the whole system works and how fun it can be how easy it can be to find the fish not catch the fish but find the fish and this technology has definitely definitely made it easier for anglers to find and stay on top of those offshore fish. Like I said, guys, down below in the video description, I will link all the products, the gear, uh, whatever, and uh, give this a try. If you're a shallow water fisherman, you know, turn off your units, be quiet, fish your frogs, fish your chatterbaits, your, uh, your shallow flipping, pitching, punching baits, and you guys are gonna catch a ton of fish out here on the offshore deal. This is how it's done, this is how I like to do it. So hopefully that shed a little bit of light on how we do it, how we find those fish, and uh, more importantly, how we line up to catch those fish. Down below, I'll link some of my favorite baits to catch them. Maybe maybe next video or so, I'll actually come out and, uh, and show you the baits that I like doing it with. Like I said, the flutter spoon, the hair jig, um, a big jig, a swim bait, and then if I need to, then that's when I'll slow down and, and throw like a shaky head or a big Carolina rig, big worm, something like that. But uh, Electronics, they're here to stay, guys. I know there's uh, some people that don't like it. There's a, there's a ton of people that really like it, and it's a, it's a huge learning curve because this stuff is advancing so quickly. I mean, just the recent updates that Humminbird has done on the live, I mean, I can set this thing out to 120 feet and look for, I can look for suspended spotted bass over 200 feet of water. This, the technology is crazy. You still have to catch the fish. You still have to present the right bait to them, but now you can stay on them, find them, fish for them, really, really accurately. So of course, right after I pull the troll motor and start idling off of that break right there, you can see all those fish stacked right there on that break you know that is the the ledge that is where the current's coming through but you guys got a little smidge of what it looks like uh when they are schooled up you know there was probably 20 fish or so there um, but again that's what we're looking for i was hoping to show you guys on on the live and everything up there we saw four or five fish chasing bait but back off of that ledge you guys got to see uh, hopefully it's not too cruddy of a video i just threw, threw the gopro up there and and put it towards the screen, but hopefully that was clear enough for you guys to get an idea of what it looks like when those fish are schooled up. Guys, if you like this type of video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate the support. Thank you for watching, and we will see you guys on the next video.